this particular case, this is the story of uh, Loretta Mojane, uh, and uh, in looking at this one, this is the second case where I want to explore some growth issues. We looked at growth issues last time, uh, and we'll look at growth issues again next time. Uh, but there's some particular issues that we can explore in the context of this business. So to do, we need to look at the business from its startup through its various um, growth stages. We will take the story right up to 2011 before we finish. The A case finishes at 97. Before we finish, we will have dealt with the D case as well. So lots of paper up front for us to look at. Lots of paper, not much technology. Um, let's um, uh, start at the very beginning and we can have a victim, can we not, to help us with this? Sorry, friend. Friend number 545. Hello, how are you? Um, help me to understand this um, business proposition and why this business has been so successful. I give you as a freebie. It has been successful. You don't need to worry about that. <coughs> successful business. Why? Okay, let's, let's talk about this in a bit more detail. And we can open this up for the class a little bit before we come back to, um, to, to, to our, our asking you for a few more details. Is anybody old enough and anybody know enough about the London lunchtime eating experience in the mid-1980s, I doubt it. <laughs> Anybody read the history textbooks to help us understand? Uh, what was it like eating a sandwich in London in the mid-1980s? You, you, you weren't there, I know, if you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the quality of the food was in terms of the, uh, the customers were not sure about the quality unless they had time on it. Yeah, such so a such I, I was there, I was a student candidate at the time. And my favourite sandwich was the cheese and tomato one. Cheese and tomato every day, which I had to queue for in the rain. It rains in London. Not you know damn cores that you get here. And that, that nice persistent drizzle that you get from August to July. Um, queue in the rain for that. <laughs> and um, uh, and this sandwich used to be made on bread, which was euphemistically called Mother's Pride. You know, anything less like anything to be proud of or anything associated with the mother is hard, hard to imagine, you know, processed bread. Um, and occasionally, uh, whilst you were waiting in the queue, you would see these little black things scuttling across the floor. And when you, when you came to that crunchy bit in the sandwich, you know, oh. sort of, Made you wonder, you know, particularly in a cheese and tomato sandwich, <laughs> not normally associated with the crunchy bits. <laughs> and uh, it's into this environment that we need to um, 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 see this prep proposition being launched. So, well, let's talk a bit more about this quality. What, how do they ensure quality? Uh, they make sure that uh, they use fresh ingredients. Yeah. And how do they guarantee that freshness? Ingredients, yes, but how else? Uh, whatever was stored on a particular day is, uh, is what, uh, anything that was left after being uh, stored on a particular day was usually disposed of. Yeah, anything else? Uh, freshness. How long does it take for a sandwich to start going a bit stale? <coughs> a day? If you make a sandwich at breakfast time, when's it going to start? Yeah, by that time, it's going to have gone off, yeah, so less than a day, hours, sometimes less than an hour. So how do you guarantee, how do they guarantee freshness? Uh, they, they make sure that, you know, it was uh, made, uh, made before, just before it was being sold, the order was placed, they made it. And how do they guarantee that it's going to be made that freshly? What's this, something that's important here, that's unusual about this chain of sandwich shops compared to other chains of sandwich shops. Where do they make their sandwiches? They, they, just, they had less, uh, less um, probably one of the reasons why they could make them fresh is that they had uh, less options. Like they yes, that's important. That helps the simplicity. But where do they make their sandwiches? <laughs> In the shops themselves. So each shop has got its own kitchen, yeah? We've got a local shop here <clears throat> with kitchen. <clears throat> each shop has got its own kitchen. We haven't got a separate factory that's making these things and then distributing these things out in bands, which is what any accountant would say. 
We can save money here, we can increase margin, we can strip out some cost. Now that these guys are saying, no, 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 this is what we're doing. The quality is important, freshness is important, this stuff has to be made on site to help guarantee that. Because cost is important, what does that do to price? Yes, is this cheap, are these cheap sandwiches? Are these cheap? No, these are, this is premium pricing that's going on here. Premium pricing, and maybe that takes us to an understanding of their clientele. Who are they aiming at in particular? So we're really aiming at people who have less time on their hands. Such as? No, people, business people, people. Business people, yeah. <coughs> Working people, office workers. And this might take us to an understanding as to where these shops were succeeding. Where, where, where did they locate these shops? In London, anywhere, particularly in London, you can be forgiven for not being able to name districts of London, but what sort of districts of London? Probably the areas where the offices located. Yeah, so we're talking about the, the city, you're talking about Canary Wharf, you're talking about um, those parts of the West End that have got a lot of, uh, where, the, where, where the finance industry is, uh, located the venture capital industry has always been in the West End rather than the city, where you get a lot of people who were um, are cash rich and time poor. It matters more to get quality quickly than, 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 than quite what they have to pay for this. Any other reason why this business has succeeded? Let's open it up for a little bit more. You've done a good job there, but there's other, other reasons why this business is successful. <coughs> other reasons, I can think of at least one important one. Because of the people are associated with this shop. They, yeah, were more. they were passionate about their work. Yeah. And then the quality of service was important. Related to here, we've got the people. Tell me about the people then. Passionate, yeah. But what, what sort of people do you get serving in sandwich shops? So, uh, before them, people who were serving in there were students who used to work for very less time. Is that different here? Do they not have students working here? Yeah. But they do. Yeah, what's different about their students? So they, they are passionate about that. How do they get passionate students? Uh, regular promotion and the pay was higher than the industry. Pay a little bit higher, yeah. Anything else? Any other read any magic that they've got in their formula for recruiting people? So we have a philanthropic side of the This philanthropic thing, yes, this charity, I'll put charity because it's shorter and quicker to write now. <clears throat> This charitable sort of flavour you've got going on here. Just back to these people again. Why? Okay, yeah. Uh, any new recruit that's taken on board is done with consultation of the existing team. Existing team that are involved in the recruitment. Uh, yes, indeed. Okay. Just one more thing I want to draw out. That's very important in the, as, as the reason for the success of this business. Why has this business succeeded? What have we missed? Yeah. The manager's bonus as in for, for the promotion. That's all the people stuff. That's right, but there's, 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 there's something bigger. It's related to people. Uh, they saw, uh, their employees saw it as an industry changing practice that they were. What does any entrepreneurial business depend upon? Customers. The founders. The founders. Who is, who is the founder here? Who is the entrepreneur? Metcalf. We both talk about Metcalf. Metcalf, Julian Metcalf. What sort of person is Julian Metcalf? Kind of? Um, he's he, he's, he's not because he shot, saw the opportunity and decided to set up the business. Entrepreneurial spirit, yeah. I just imagine that there's, there's clues in the case, the sort of personality he has. What's, what what is, what is he just about to go and do? What is he preparing himself for? PR. PR. Going off to do a speech. Yeah, what sort of guy is he? Do you think? Uh, um, so he's a kind of uh, guy who has a flair, like uh, flair. publicizes, Pub um, self-publicist, extrovert, char you know, colourful character. <clears throat> is he the sort of shy, retiring type who pushes himself away? Uh, but the customers know who he is. Yes. How do they know that? He writes his name on the side of the sandwiches. He even gives away his phone number, expecting people to phone him up. That's the sort of guy he is. Um, is he the only uh, uh, reason, the only individual who's behind this business? No. We've got this Beecham chap. Beecham. Yeah, Sinclair Beecham. Uh, tell me about Beecham. What sort of guy is he? Right, huh? he's, he's been very key, uh, I mean, as 
There you go. MacArthur's not saying I've done this on my own. It's that great line he has, without me he wouldn't exist. Without him it wouldn't work. Which one of the two is the entrepreneur? Becca? Why do you say that? He's the one who's come up with the idea. How do you know that? Not given. Doesn't say. Which one's the entrepreneur? Both of them? Who owns this business? Who's got the majority stake? That's what you say. Now, they're making presumptions here. They founded this one together, didn't they? Yes. I'll tell you how they met. They met at the property college, yeah? Doing surveying exams and things. Julian put a notice on the notice board one day. It said, uh, this is for the other students to see, uh, he said he was offering £250 to anybody who could guarantee him a pass in one of the particular exams. Yeah? Why was Julian putting that advert on the board? He hadn't done any work, that's why. He's trying to find a way of, uh, of engineering a pass. Who answered the advert? Sinclair answered the advert. Sinclair said, if you give me a thousand pounds, I will guarantee you a pass in the whole qualification. <laughs> well, that's how they got to know each other. Um, um, I, I, I presume they did both pass this thing, but neither of them ended up working in the property industry. They put this sandwich chain together. Sandwich business. They both founded it. Both equal shareholders. Who's the entrepreneur? They both are. It's very easy for us in the West and in the East to presume that entrepreneurship is something that individuals do. They don't. Entrepreneurship is a team game. We know that. Yeah, entrepreneurship is a team game. Businesses founded by teams will grow further and will grow faster than businesses founded by individuals. Research will show that time and time again. Always exceptions, of course. Just because Julian is the flashy one, the extrovert, doesn't mean that he's the only person who matters here. And to be fair to him, he doesn't hide that. He, he confesses, he writes it in the case. And there's somebody else here who's just as important as me in, in, in the formation of this particular business. Uh, but there's something that these guys bring that undoubtedly accounts for the success of this particular business as well. Let's uh, push, push it on a bit and then we'll do some other <coughs> questions that we need to address. And I think I need another volunteer here. Yeah? Let's have another volunteer. Let's have um, number 531. 531. 531. Nobody owns up to 531. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's have another one here. This is uh, 415. 415. Hello, 415. How are you? <coughs> 415. Which one is 415? Big house, yeah. Uh, I want to understand um, uh, about where this business is going next. Roots to growth. Growth strategies. Yeah. I want to characterise the opportunity. As this business looks at growing in the future, um, uh, what, what sort of things could it be growing into? Maybe you're writing a, 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 a student project on this company, yeah. helping it understand this issue. So where this business can go to grow, to grow, what recommendations would you be making? Okay, at present, uh, we are told that the business has a fairly good presence in London. At yeah. Least. And, uh, so has it dominated London? Is there room for further growth in London? Uh, not really, because it's almost there in all the key locations. Okay, yeah. 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 So where would you go then? Uh, well, they have tried to go uh, outside London, but uh, they haven't been that successful in the sense they are almost breaking even, but uh, the footfall hasn't been as <laughs> promising as what you see. Do you reckon there's any hope for growth outside London? Uh, on a personal, personal opinion, I don't think so, because... Uh, well, what's, if you want to stand the chance of growing outside of London, uh, what sort of qualities do you need to look for in your location? Yeah, firstly you need people who will be pressed on time. Yes. And, uh, that is it only Londoners who are pressed on time? No, but uh, well, if you're talking about international locations such as Hong Kong... Hi, right, Mark, we'll, we'll be, we'll, we're going to get active in a minute. Okay. I'm just interested in the UK. Do you reckon there might be other places in the UK that where, where this might succeed? Just because they've failed for a couple of times doesn't mean you should write it off. What qualities are we looking for? People who are short on time, what else? Short on time, people who uh, you know, appreciate quality, yeah. food, and 
people who are also willing to pay a certain bit of a premium, price. yeah. So what sort of people are those? Uh, people who uh, have a certain spending power. And We've been here already. These are the business people, the office workers. <coughs> where, where, where are you going to stand a chance of locating this thing in the UK then? In, in, uh, in, in, uh, in London. Mostly. In London. Anywhere else? Uh, anywhere else? Manchester. Manchester.